What's going on guys? It's Machanga back with another video. So we did not get an Apple event in March, but we still got a new product release. If you've heard about the upgraded models of the iPad Pros, then you may be wondering if you should upgrade to the brand new 2020 iPad Pro. There are a few hardware and software changes from the 2018 iPad Pro models, so we'll cover those really quickly. You get a new A12Z Bionic processor with eight core graphics and a brand new thermal cooling design. The camera system has been updated to include dual cameras. So in addition to the 12 megapixel main camera, there's also a 10 megapixel ultra wide lens, similar to the one found on the iPhone 11 Pro Max that can also shoot 4K video at 24 frames per second. Now, if you're into AR or augmented reality, there's a new LiDAR scanner included on this model, which touts improved object tracking and depth. So this is really great news for AR developers, for example. You still get both the 12.9 inch and 11 inch models, but instead of having to settle for only 64 gigs of storage on the base model, these new ones start at 128 gigs of storage. And in my opinion, that's major. To round out the upgrades, we now get Wi-Fi 6, which offers faster speeds, especially if you're using a Wi-Fi 6 compatible router. Now, the official release of iPadOS 13.4 is right around the corner, so we can look forward to full mouse and cursor support, and of course, the use of a trackpad that doesn't require any workarounds. I personally have a couple of Bluetooth trackpads that I really want to test out with the new iPad OS 13.4, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. Even though this piece of hardware is separate from the iPad Pro itself, I do have to mention the new Magic Keyboard case. Fortunately, it's backlit, it has redesigned scissor switch keys, and a built-in trackpad. I don't really see the new floating display feature as that enticing for me personally, but it's cool and it's a notable change from the old keyboard case that I've already replaced for a Logitech version. Already owning the last generation iPad Pro 12.9 inch model with one terabyte of storage, I'm not completely sold on upgrading to the 2020 version just based on my use case. The performance has been great on it and I'm most interested in the overpriced Magic Keyboard case because it does have that built-in trackpad. I'll leave updated pricing information in the video description below. The new ultra wide camera is a good addition, but again, I don't think it's such a spectacular feature that I just have to have it. I haven't found myself even using the current main camera on my iPad for anything outside of turning physical documents into digital copies and taking quick snapshots for reference and work purposes. I will say for on the go designers though, the new camera setup might make this 2020 iPad Pro worth the upgrade over any previous generation. If you have a different model of iPad, not a Pro model, then you should also consider this new 2020 iPad Pro, especially if you had already been thinking about upgrading to this form factor. If you've never used an iPad and you're intrigued by the tablet design due to its portability, and you also want a device that can easily replace your traditional laptop, this should definitely be on your short list. And with these prices, maybe your wish list. I prefer the larger of the two at 12.9 inches, but the 11 inch model is available for anyone that wants something more compact. Based on the performance of the last generation devices, this is easily a top choice for both personal and professional use, including photo and video editing. I really wanna do more than just grab some benchmark numbers. I'm really only convinced by real world day-to-day -day use. I mean, any product can look good from the spec sheet and from the performance benchmarks. I'll have to spend some time with the new model before posting a review. So once we get it in the studio, I'll be sure to update you guys. So make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. I'll leave all of the relevant links below in the video description. If you either want to get more information about the new iPad Pros and the new Magic Keyboard case, or if you're just ready to order them, this actually might be a good time to take a look at the 2018 models because you should easily find better, lower pricing now that the new ones are out. Apple continues to say that your next computer isn't a computer at all. 
And while I am primarily a PC user, I have to say that you can get a lot done on the iPad Pro with and without a keyboard and without the Apple Pencil if you're not ready to factor those in for maybe budget purposes. The processing power is, is really legitimate and with every OS update, you're able to get even more use out of these Pro models. I do use my iPad Pro with the latest Apple Pencil and in my opinion, it's a great accessory that I highly recommend buying at the same time that you purchase the iPad. But is it a necessity? No, I don't feel it is. I consider the iPad Pro to be an extremely capable creativity tool. And with that being said, it's not a cheap toy. Yes, it does have a tablet form factor, but it offers so much more than just a big touch screen to watch YouTube videos on. If you already use an iPad professionally or casually, let me know down in the comment section. Are you even interested in upgrading? If you don't yet have an iPad of any kind, is this new one on your radar? Let me know your thoughts. Well, that's my time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.